right guys, Andy Thomas from Wolf on the Run. How you all doing during these reluctant times? Um, back a while ago, I had a, a leak on my front suspension and I always thought I'm gonna change the oil in that. I never got round to it. I've had the oil for a while. I believe that the original oil is a seven Newton, uh, sorry, seven weight. Um, and I'm gonna upgrade it to double that. I'm gonna go 15 weight. But I've leaked out of the right hand fork. Um, on this track, I had a bit of grit going, and um, yeah, it leaked out a fair bit, and I just haven't got around to it, but we're gonna have a go today. Um, bear in mind, I'm not a mechanic, I'm a builder by trade, and I class myself as a handyman. Um, so I'm gonna have a go at this myself, and if it helps, it helps. All right, so first up, guys, um, I'm sitting on my back wheel, I'm on my center stand. I haven't got a bike um, jack, um, but I have got uh, some axle stands that I've wedged underneath there just so I've got my front wheel off the floor um, So all right, I'm gonna start tearing it down All right guys, so first up I'm gonna just slightly loosen these which will take the pressure off this ring here Then I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the bottom ones on um, Which are those ones down there as you can see I've got my light bracket fastened to that as well which go through so I'll leave those on for now I'll undo these two which will take the pressure off this and then I'll crack these as I say because I don't want to put um, the forks in a vice to hold it because these will be tight and then I'll obviously trying to hold a piece of tube without any connection um, yeah you're not going to do it so just release the release these first take the pressure off that thread and then we'll release them all right guys so I've loosened those off I've not took them out, I've just took the tension off them. Um, it's quite um, a, th a thought, um, obviously I've used a socket on there but it is tight because obviously I'm thinking putting them back together I've got to get the torque wrench on there with the socket. Um, it is quite tight um, but I'm sure we'll, we'll work away somehow. Um, as you can see as it moves around it gives you a little bit more room but you've got no room above then to get leverage for your torque wrench but we'll get to that later on. All right, so those are undone, so now I'm gonna tack the big ones on the top. I'm just doing a half a turn. loosen it off just to crack that off as I say you don't want to clamp that tube all right phone all right guys so that's the top end loosened off as I wanted um, as I said the little pinch bolts undone the top caps I've undone and now I'm going to concentrate on taking all the wheel and stripping all this down here um, I will film it um, and then I'll speed it up because everybody should know how to take off their wheel and mud guard and whatever Damage. There's a repair job look.
There we go, guys, all stripped down. Um, as you can see, if you look at that one, look, it's not too bad, a bit of dust on it, there's a couple of scuffs on it. Uh, but this one, as you can see, look, it's still been leaking. That's pretty, pretty gross. It's all caked in oil. So even from a while back, it's still been seeping out. All right, guys, so we've got the ones inside here now, which we're gonna crack. Top one. Well, I'll just quickly show you guys thinking about it I'm doing that is on there you can see my chrome or the gold color is completely flat with that part there same on both sides so I know when I put them back in afterwards that I'll put them exactly back to that level there so it's always trying good trying to get yourself a recognition mark these might be five mil up ten mil up um, even a couple of mil lower but um, Mine are completely flat there, so that's where it's going to go back to. All right, so that side's loosened off, so theoretically, there we go. All right, guys, so there you go. Um, that's off in one. I am going to mark these up with a little texture on the top there, um, just so I know which side was which, or I, I might even do it down the bottom there. You'd think you wouldn't be able to get them the wrong way around because those went at the back for your brakes where obviously it turns like that, so it can go either way. Um, not as I'm going to bother. Um, I am going to make sure that they go back in the same way by marking them up. Do the same to the other leg. So all these bolts are the torque set so I have downloaded the torque spec sheet to put it all back together um, so it's quite critical that you do check everything there we go number two and as I say guys it is you know, I've got that sitting on that jack there and on the centre stand. The other thing you could do if you haven't got a jack or whatever, you could put a, a ratchet strap of some sort to the back and ratchet it down to somewhere solid. If you've got a tree or a stump or concrete post or something, you could put a ratchet strap around here and hold it back. Um, or even pack that up with wood, but obviously be careful. Make sure it is nice and solid because if that comes forward, your bike's on the deck. All right, there she is, stripped down. All right, we're going to the forks. All right, guys, so this is the good leg, the one that wasn't leaking. So this is the one I'm gonna take apart first, um, or should I say drain first. I'm also gonna measure in jug. So I'm gonna measure what comes out of here because this one hasn't leaked, so I will know exactly how much to put back in, whereas the other one's leaked, so it could give you a false reading. Um, this might have leaked a little bit, but you know, it's going to be very close. You could always look it up. Um, I'm sure it would tell you, but for me, the old way would be just to empty it out, whatever it is, put that back in. So as I say, guys, look, just for sealing this, oops, kicked you over. I've put an L on the top of there for left. So when I'm sitting on the bike, that's going back on the left-hand side so I know which fork is which. All right. First off, I'm going to pop these seals. The dust seals. Oh, let me show you this first. This is this is called the Fork Doctor. Um, it's not all that obviously, but this is like a little 
I've seen guys make these out of milk bottle tops, uh, sorry, milk bottles, plastic milk bottles. But what it does, if that goes around there like that, you pull that seal down. Let me show you, let me show you. So when I was um, say up on this rock track and uh, noticed that it was leaking, I hadn't got one of these, but I went to the local motorcycle shop. I tried to make it out of a bottle, but the bottle I had was a water bottle, and it was too flix, too flimsy, and just wasn't going right. So I went to the motorcycle shop and bought one. These are about fifteen to twenty bucks. So you pull that seal out. Put that inside like that and then you push that up which then goes behind the seal behind the seal like so and you turn it and then you pull it down and that's gone inside behind the seal and any bit of shit the piece I had inside there was like it was oh, a good three or four mil rock so that's why it poured out but as you can see, that's pretty clean, it's not bad at all. But that little spike there just pulls any rubbish out that's in that seal. Fork Doctor, get yourself one of those, keep it handy. I'll keep that in the toolbox on the bike. Um, that's just a little cover that comes with it. Just keeps it round so you don't flatten it, squash it, break it. Just keeps it nice and neat and tidy. There is other ones, I can't remember what company this was. No name on it. Oh, hang on, yeah, Rhino. Rhino 45 to 55 millimeter. Fork Doctor. All right, let's get on with these. So I've took that seal off, which has exposed the seal inside, sorry, this, the uh, dust guard, not the seal. The seal's inside there. So I'm gonna open the top, finish opening that up, and then drain it out. All right guys, so I've tipped out as much as I can. And now I'm just gonna drop that down. I'm just gonna put a bit of, which will pressure it a few times and then that should give me a little bit more but no, looks like we've got it all no, we got it all, okay alright guys, so as you can see, it's not too bad at all. It's a little bit dirty, but not bad. If you look, it's quite reddish, clear still. There is a little bit of sediment in there, but I'm gonna let that settle. I'm gonna measure it, and that will tell me how much is in there. All right, guys. So, I've got a dilemma. It's come out 600 milliliters, and I've got a one liter bottle. And two lots of 600 is 1.2 litres. So I haven't got enough. Now I've either got to go up the road and fetch some more, or because this one's pretty good, I might filter it and take 100 litres of this, uh, 100 litres, 100 millilitres into one fork and 100 millilitres into the other fork, along with 500. Because I say, look, this is 15 weight, and that was seven weight. So it's not going to work as long as I've filtered out any filings, any shit. The oil, the oil, the oil is still pretty good and clean. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I've been living with that for four, four years now with the bike, and so that's not bad. So I'm going to filter it, and I'm going to put 100 mils in with each half liter of this stuff. All right, guys. So we want a nice, clean, fresh rag. I'm just going to wipe this, give it a wipe over. Um, just check out to see if there's any dints, scratches. The one way you'll tell if there's any marks or scratches on here, um, obviously if you have got marks and scratches that is going to impede on your seal, um, especially if they're, um, or, well yeah vertical, not horizontal at the minute, vertical because that's going to create a groove which the oil is going to run out of. So we'll have a look, see if there is any marks on it, we'll get close up. Nothing at all on that one. There's a 
tiny little line but the way to tell is if you put it like that and then drop that that drops to the bottom that's a nice free flowing shocker there's nothing stopping that at all so there's no burrs no you put the seal back on your cover plate that, there you go just absolutely perfect run down so you've got nothing stopping it whatsoever all right exactly the same to number two so again we'll check as you can see look so you don't look too bad but I know there was a decent sized piece of grit in there um, but it don't look like it's done any damage to the fork which is good so we'll clean it all up I'll empty it out and see what was it obviously I've got 600 mils in there we'll see what comes out of this one see how much I did lose all right guys so I've just drained that one and it's just under 1100 so I've lost 105 perhaps 105 millilitres which is not loads but it's quite a bit all right guys so I've just just out of curiosity gone around that we're going with the fork doctor on this one um, it all seems to be nice and clean there's nothing in there but what I have noticed right at the bottom there let's see if I can zoom you in so a little black spot there that could have been right at the bottom when it was compressed going over the jumps that's where that rock could have gone in and then obviously from there that's a little bit of a, a dint scratch so I'm going to sand that out Alright guys, so I say I'm going to sand that out. So what we've got is a belt... <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to use a belt sander. I'm going to use this bit of worn, very worn, um, 1200 grit, wet and dry. There's hardly anything on it. You can use the green scourers that you actually wash up with. But this is just going to be enough abrasion just to take that little mark out of it. So you can use a little bit of oil if you want to. See, it was that small, I've lost it, there it is. So it's a tiny, tiny little fleck, but obviously that will only have impact when that comes right down and that would leak fluid then over that seal because of the hole. Um, it shouldn't be too bad anywhere else, but as you can see there, look, the oil's pushing down on that seal. So only when you go bottoming, is it going to leak any fluid because that's where it is down there everywhere else up here is pretty good well it's really good actually which is great news so I'm just going to dip a bit of oil just to give it a bit of lubrication and then that's it as simple as that nothing to it guys nothing to it and that's gone it might have just been that little bit where the grit is. Clean and pristine. Gone completely. So that now is absolutely mint. Beautiful. Alright guys, as I said, I'm a little bit short on the oil. I'm not going to go all the way up the road to go and get a bit more. Not 400 mils in each. Um, obviously the ratio, 1 to 6, that's going to be plenty. Um, so I've got a plastic tub and I've got a sock, a little sports sock, like a nylon looking sock. I'm going to put that over the top of this tub. Basically I just want to filter any little particles out of it. So here you go. So I'm just going to pour that over there. As I say I need a couple of, a couple of hundred mils. question is is it working yeah can you see let's bring that up put a bit more on so my theory obviously with filtering 
is I'm getting the half decent stuff out of it and all the shit that was in there, the iron filings and stuff that are gonna be left on the top of that sock. So it's gonna be half decent anyway to put in. All right guys, so I've poured, I've obviously left that and been very careful as much as I can. Just poured it very gently to keep all the sediment to the bottom. So it is half decent oil that's at the top. I've poured in there, uh, that's at 650 now. So I've poured in there at about 350, 400 mils. As I say, I only need 100 to 200, but I'll do a little bit more than needed. I'm gonna get a bottle, pour that into it, and we'll see what sediment's left in the bottom. All right, guys, well, that was pretty much clear all the way through. So let me show you. This, obviously, this jug was clean, spotless. Get a bit of white card so you can see. Pretty, pretty good, but look at that there. Let's zoom you into that. There's two, two or three little lumps, but can you see that there? That is a big chunk of rock stroke dirt. So yeah, not too bad at all. So again guys, I'm going to put the rubber seal back on. The dust seal, sorry. This is a little nylon hammer, just in case you miss and you won't do much damage, it's had a bit of wear but you know it works so that's back on there again we'll do that drop test to get you up so basically unscrew the top and then you'll see perfect straight down to the bottom so that's there's no stickiness that's a nice slide down. So that's absolute crisp and clean. Beautiful. Now you can put a little bit of grease on this. Um, I'm just trying to think what would be the best grease, probably gold grease or the red grease. Um, not just any axle grease, you want something that's non-gritty at all. I'm not gonna bother. Um, I'm happy with it. I mean, it would help with the seal. Um, but I'm not going to bother. Alright, this is where we'll do a bit of measuring, weighing. So I'm going to pour 100 mils. Too much already. Still too much. There we go guys, that's 100 mils. As you can see, it's nothing. So I mix with that 15 weight, the old 700. Uh, seven weight um, it's it's going to do nothing at all it's entirely up to you as I say you know if you want to go out and buy more that's fine but I'm not going to bother I've filtered it as you've seen and it, it's going to mix well it'll be fine all right I'll move this out the way and then we'll pour 500 mils of this there's different types of um, fork oil this is castor oil as I say, and it's 15 weight. So I'm gonna pour that in now till I'm at 600. Mm. 
there should be a measure on there. Yep, and I'm exactly 200, 400 and halfway between the 206. So yep, perfect. You see, the little measures on the side, each one of them is 200 mils, 200, 400, and I'm in between the next one. So that's half a litre mixed with that. So that's my potion. As you can see, it's just dissipating now inside there. The old stuff compared to the new, not a drama. All right, so I'm going to check this on the floor and I'm going to fill it up on the floor. So I'm going to pour that down the side of the leg. I'm holding it just a hundred mil from the top. No reason, just am. So it's been bending down too far. Give that a bit of a push down. Three. Now, when it comes to this, turn it backwards till you hear that click, then you know you're right on your thread and tighten it up. I'll just give that a little nip. I just measured out the uh, the other one from the the new stuff into there, and there was 550 mils. So I only had to add 50 mils to that. If I'd have known and done it originally, I could have probably just divided it up 75, 75. But it's not going to make a difference at all. All right, um, I've nipped them up. I'm going to just give them another wipe over, clean them all up and then start reassembly. Alright guys, all cleaned up. It's basically exactly the same. I'm going to put it all back together first um, and then I'll go around all the individual bolts. I'll tighten everything up by hand and I'll go all, just nip it up and then I'll go all around the, the bolts afterwards with all the torque settings, making sure everything is set to uh, what is? Alright guys, so I've not tightened them up, I've nipped them up enough. And then I'm going to put this back through the yoke. Checking the top as I said earlier. And we just nipped up by hand again on the bottom yoke. Um, I've got the top level that I spoke about earlier, so I've not done the top ones yet, just that one. Same the other side.
mill too much, off a mill too much. Just gonna have to wonder them again. Just a fraction. No, nope, not happy with that. Half a mil too much. So, nope. take off a little bit more of the pressure on that yoke. Or your triple tree, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Good. As I say, I'm not tightening these up. Tight, tight. Alright guys, so I've downloaded this. So what we're looking at there, look, is the fork bottom bridge. Which basically is your tree, or your triple clamp, whatever you want to call it. Um, fork bottom bridge pinch bolt. So there's four bolts, 8mm, and it's saying 25. 25 Newton. So I'll set the torque wrench to 25 Newton and give it a whiz up. Alright guys, so I've set it, 25, and then obviously I've gone up, I've set that one just, you can hear it clicking, that means I'm at my limit, and then I tightened that one, clicking, got to my limit, went back to that one, and then it went some more. So there's a good pointer for you, just go backwards and forwards between the one and two until the both at that proper torque setting that you require. As I say, these ones are 25 newton meters. Or in old money in pounds, um, 18. 18 pounds per square foot. So I'll tighten this one up. There you go, give it that click. Then go on to the top one. Is this? Again, nip it up. Click back down to the bottom one. So it's gone some more. Click back to the top one. These settings are pretty crucial, otherwise, they wouldn't put them on for you. Again, gone some more. Click. I, I click and then just give it a little tiny. Tiny, tiny, just to make sure that you're at it and slightly after it, nothing massive. Click, click, nip, that's me. All right, I'll do the top yoke. All right, so I've nipped that one up, which was 35. Now I'm gonna go back to these, and these I think were 22, so these are slightly less than the bottom ones. The bottom was 25, these are 22. Okay guys, 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 so all talked up, as I say, alternate, go backwards and forwards, make sure that you've, you know, you've got them clamped up, as you see there, I spoke earlier, make sure that your measurements at the top where you was before are exactly as is, 1 mil past, 2 mil past, 5 mil past, 10 mil past, um, just make a note of that before you actually start, um, I've not altered all the dampers on it, so the tension, so that's neither in nor there, 
So I've clamped, I've um, tightened those up. Bottom one, this one, then those. Back in reverse. So all these have been torqued up. Um, time to put my wheel back on. There we go, so my wheel's on. I'm just going to put my brake calipers back on. I've just checked my brake pads. I'm happy with them. There's nowhere. They're not too bad. There's about 4mm left on either side. So put these back on. I'm going to put a bit of thread lock on these. Just a little bit. Because I've just read that these only torque up to 9.8. <laughs> and to me, that doesn't sound a lot. So, I'm going to put some thread lock on it. Nine point eight doesn't sound a lot at all. I'll get my brake shoes on, brake calipers back on, and um, come back to you. Alright, so all that's back together, I've repaired my broken uh, guard, lucky enough it's double clamped, so I've just glued it all in one, as you can see the break across there, look, I've just glued it together, so this outer piece, um, it must have had a knock at some stage, I remember on one of the earlier videos, me cutting off the back of this here, because that was um, got damaged on a rock, so I cut that sh shorter. Um, it might have been from then and not noticed it, but uh, yeah, it's all back together anyway. I'll put that on. There we go, guys! Fantastic fork oil upgrade, all done, all finished, all put back together. Um, the only thing I could advise is probably after you're doing 100, 150k, is to recheck all your bolts that you've tightened up. Just go through it again, just make sure that they are 100%. Um, I didn't take any bolts out, which I thought afterwards I perhaps should have done and put a bit of lock seal on them, um, just to keep the threads in there. But I will, as I say, after 100, 150 Ks, I will check them, make sure they're still good. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Fantastic. There you go, guys. There you go. If you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Boink. And then head over, if you haven't already subscribed, press the subscribe button. And then if you click on the bell icon, any future videos that I do make, you'll get notified and uh, you can watch them at your leisure.